at the top of the CIA FBI uh, terrorist watch list. And yes, the CIA has set off offices all over the country. They've come in here, me, to interrogate me and try to get me to become an informant on my Arab and Muslim clients, which I refuse to do. Uh, it would have violated my ethical obligations as an attorney and their constitutional rights. So they put me on this uh, terrorist watch list. And the CIA so, is not supposed to be operating domestically, and they're putting local army in every major police department now and putting it in the news. I mean, they right. are can, really getting ready. They're, they're brazen uh, about this. And then you've already mentioned uh, uh, coordinating this with NORTHCOM. So... What, and I believe it was Cheney who said that, you know, if, if there's a terrorist attack, he'll, he'll blame it on Iran. Um, and, uh, you know, it was Tommy Franks uh, who said uh, uh, after 9-11, uh, General Tommy Franks, America is just one terrorist attack away uh, from uh, a military state. You know, he said that. And I think he knew what he was talking about, uh, a military takeover of the country. He said the American people uh, will demand it. So it would be, you know, even worse than, say, what we saw in World War II, uh, internment of uh, Japanese-American citizens and, and things of that nature. Um, you know, it, it, it would be very serious. So it's the perfect takeover. They get to move their chess pieces around the world, destabilize the planet, use proxy states, kamikazes, uh, bombard other nations from the air, and have domestic police state crackdowns in Airstrip 1 England and the United States, and put out DHS lists leaking liberals, conservatives, gun owners, openly say Homeland Brigade, openly turn the United States into a total police state, my God, they are really doing it. Do you think they'll get away with it? I mean, are these guys so bold? Is there no end? Is the public mesmerized by Michael Jackson? Will America completely descend into total military rule? Well, I'm afraid they've been mesmerized by uh, Barack Obama. Uh, you know, you have to look at what Obama and his henchmen and his henchwomen are doing here and not what Obama is saying. He's uh, a far smoother... Uh, political character than uh, Bush was. You know, at least Bush, uh, you know, pretty much said what he meant, meant what he said, and, you know, you could you could really see it. Whereas with Obama, uh, uh, the rhetoric, the propaganda, the press conferences, very smooth, very reassuring, uh, but the policies, as you point out, are just continuing and in some extent uh, accelerating. Even Senator McCain in the campaign, when Obama said that he, w he was going to launch a tax on Pakistan, Senator McCain, to his credit, criticized Obama and said he, he was not going to do that. Um, and you have this massive escalation uh, in Afghanistan now, no authorization from the U.N. Security Council, no authorization from the United States Congress as required by the uh, uh, War Powers Resolution, and then expanding the war uh, into Pakistan, very reminiscent of um, uh, the uh, massive escalation into Vietnam. Indeed, uh, today they, you know, they admitted, well, yeah, we really need about uh, at least a hundred thousand uh, American troops in Afghanistan. Well, the Soviets had a hundred thousand troops uh, in Afghanistan, and they still lost. Um, so, um, you know, this is very dangerous. And then, like Nixon, then spreading the um, uh, Vietnam War to Cambodia, uh, setting off a coup d'etat there, uh, resulting in the Khmer Rouge coming to power and genocide. Uh, and Which way, Brzezinski brags he supported, and then that goes back to the Rockefellers again. In closing, then, Dr. Boyle, does it look 60-40, 60% chance they're going to go ahead and launch World War Three? I mean, what do we do to put pressure on them? Is there any hope, or is it just all the fad of Obama, and that's the end of it, and... That's the end of the republic. Well, I think, it, you know, it really is up, up to you and me and the American citizens. Most American people here don't want war against Iran. We don't want uh, World War III. Um, and we're going to have to get organized and uh, uh, stop these people. I also noticed, uh, even in the Pentagon, there, the uh, Admiral uh, Mullen, in response to the Biden threat uh, against Iran, 
uh, said that, you know, an attack on Iran would be a bad idea. So, I, you know, I think, you know, yeah. in their heart of hearts, the professional military people well, realize this would be insane. But, hey, the war against Iraq was insane, too. Well, uh, well that goes back to Fox Fallon. Uh, and that goes back to Fox Fallon, the Fallon. He didn't want to attack Iran and resigned over that. So well, Bush uh, fired him. That's pretty clear. <laughs> Bush got rid of him and forced forced uh, Admiral Fallon out because he was going public uh, with the Bush neocon plans to uh, attack Iran. And Admiral Fallon did the best he could to blow the whistle and stop it. To I think his great credit. Now, so I that's the silver lining, to Admiral Fallon. So, so that's the silver lining in this cloud, is that the neocons, one, and now the neocons, two, reincarnated with the slicker, kind of new order closer, Barack Obama, they're almost giving orders like Hitler to armies that don't exist, or will they just go ahead and give the order and it's going to be followed? I, I really don't know. I don't even know if they know. You know, if, if uh, the Pentagon were ordered to attack uh, Iran, would they carry out that order? Clearly, Fallon made it clear he wasn't going to do it. The problem there, however, is the neocon connection with Israel, which is why Biden's threat is so dangerous, that if, if the neocons, uh, and Biden's one of them, uh, conclude that the uh, Pentagon uh, would not attack uh, Iran and resist the orders, they'll just have Israel do it. And then, you know, Iran will retaliate against us and, and the war will be off. Well, I mean, I'm no geopolitical whiz kid, but... This is in sheer insanity to attack Iran, especially if you even believe the CIA's assessment. They're seven years from a primitive nuke, and then you find out the West helped give North Korea its nukes with the same old suspects, Donald Rumsfeld on the board of ABB. They're out there throwing down guns to these third world countries like an old Western villain and then saying, pick up the gun, kid, so they can shoot them. And it, it, it's just... It's, it's obvious the real target is having a war so they can domestically loot us but have the rally around the flag effect. I, you know, the, I'm afraid you're right. Yeah, as, as Bush uh, uh, said, it, it, you know, a dictatorship uh, is a lot easier as long as he's a dictator, sure. Now, um, now the, the people are waking up to Obama, though. I mean, his polls are dropping. A lot of people are figuring out that the cult of Obama is a fraud, is a scam. Uh, but then that almost encourages him to go ahead and launch a war, doesn't it? I really don't know. I, I think, you know, the signs are not very good, especially the uh, uh, Biden threat. That, okay. It was just reprehensible. And I think, uh, you know, for the good of our republic and for the good of humanity, we're going to have to go all out and, and stop the uh, this neocon agenda for... Uh, war against Iran and the uh, destabilization and crack up of uh, Pakistan. Understand, Pakistan has nukes. Um, who knows what would happen if, if Pakistan were to crack up? Um, All right. Well, we appreciate uh, Dr. Francis A. Boyle joining us briefly. Tell us about the new book, Tackling America's Toughest Questions Alternative Media Interviews. Right. Uh, this book tries to uh, go back. Uh, to September 11th, it starts there, and deals with all the atrocities that the Bush administration and his neocons inflicted on the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, international law, uh, and human rights, uh, and, and world order, uh, literally until they walked out of office by giving Israel the green light to blow up Gaza and literally exterminate 1,400 uh, Gazans for uh, nothing at all. Um, and then, you know, there's a, a brief conclusion, you know, where I say, you know, that unfortunately it looks like under Obama uh, we're going to have a, a continuation of many of the uh, Bush policies sort of flavored by a lot of the Clinton people. And remember, the Clinton people, all the Clinton foreign affairs people, these are the sons and the daughters of the best and the brightest that gave us the Vietnam War, uh, as documented by David Halberstam. Remember, McNamara just died uh, yesterday. I'd encourage you to read the best and the brightest. Uh, John Kennedy was elected president. 
recruited the best and the brightest from Harvard, and they gave us the Vietnam War. They gave us the Cuban Missile Crisis. They gave us ICBMs and SLBMs, uh, et cetera. So this is the next generation of, of these elitists, and Obama is one of them. You know, a bright young man from Harvard Law School, uh, a charming wife, you know, uh, I, I forget, Jackie went to Vassar. Uh, well, Michelle, you know, went to Princeton and Harvard Law School. And, you know, it, it looks like a bit of history all over again. God help us. Well, I hope to talk to you again in the near future. Take care, doctor. All right. Thanks a lot, Alex. Again, we... my best to your uh, listening audience. But, look, you know, let's get out there and get organized. That's what we have to do. We have to stop these people. Absolutely. Take care. Okay, bye. Yeah, that's what they do. They wrap themselves in the flag and then just engage in every treason you can imagine while looting and robbing the public.